All right, what I want to talk to you today about are two very strange things that you need to know about that have relation to a law which we call Herring's Law, like uh, smoked herring. And the things I want to talk to you about are pseudoparasis of the contralateral antagonist, which is a mouthful, but I'll explain that in a second. And the second is differentiating the primary versus the secondary deviation and how which eye is fixing determines that. So the first thing is you need to know a little bit about Herring's Law. And Herring's Law means that we have equal innervation to both eyes because the muscles are yoked together. And so if we want to look, for example, up and to the left, we have the two muscles that are yoked together. The left superior rectus and the right inferior oblique are yoked together. And if we want to look down and to the left, it would be the right superior oblique, which is yoked to the left inferior rectus muscle. So we have yoking between the two agonist muscles. And what that means is the two muscles that are going in the same direction must be given the same information at the same time to go in that direction. So the left lateral rectus would be yoked to the right medial rectus in horizontal case. And because of Herring's law, we might get a pseudoparesis. Pseudo means false. It look paralyzed of the contralateral antagonist. So for a fourth nerve palsy, which is the superior oblique muscle palsy, and so in this example, we'll just say right superior oblique palsy. So let's just say we have a right superior oblique muscle palsy. The ipsilateral right eye in this case, ipsilateral inferior oblique muscle will appear to overact. So this will overact because its antagonist is weak. So when they look up and to the left, because the superior oblique is weak, there's less direct opposition from the ipsilateral antagonist, which is the right inferior oblique. That right inferior oblique is yoked to the left superior rectus muscle. And that means when you look up and to the left, the right eye is already looking at the target because the right inferior oblique was overacting. And that means the left eye is going to receive less innervational effort to look up by Herring's law of equal innervation. And so it'll look like you have an underaction of the left superior rectus muscle when you say look up and to the left because this eye is already on the target. However, if we block the right eye by covering it, then we can make this eye go up using a duction. And that proves, so it's like this, this eye looks like it's underacting. I take away this eye and I say, look up, but just with one eye. That means it's a pseudoparesis. It's not really paralyzed. It's just yoked to the overacting right inferior oblique muscle. And that's a pseudoparesis of the contralateral antagonist because the right superior oblique was weak, its ipsilateral antagonist is strong, right inferior oblique, which means its contralateral antagonist is weak. But it's pseudo-weak. It's not really weak, it just looks like it's weak because the right eye is already looking at the target. That's different than a primary versus secondary deviation. A primary versus secondary deviation means it depends which eye is fixing. So if you are fixing with the non-paretic eye, that we call the primary deviation. So if someone has a six nerve palsy, let's say they have a right six nerve palsy, the eye is gonna be turned in, that's gonna cause an esotropia and the left eye is the non-paretic eye is going to be fixing on the target. So left eye is fixating straight ahead on the target. Right eye is turned in, esotropia, because right eye cannot abduct, because right eye has six nerve palsy. That would be the primary deviation. However, some people choose to fixate with the paretic eye. 
either because they see better in that eye or it happens to be their dominant eye. And if that were to occur, the right eye takes more innervational effort to get to midline. That will be transmitted by Herring's law to the yoke muscle. The yoke muscle of the right lateral rectus is the left medial rectus, and that means the eye will turn in like this. But because it took so much more innervational effort to get the right eye to the midline, that extra effort will be transmitted by Herring's law to the left medial rectus muscle, and the deviation will be larger. So the secondary deviation is always larger than the primary deviation. That depends on whether you are fixing with the paretic or the non-paretic eye. And some people would choose to fix with the paretic, the weak eye, either because they see better, it's 2020 when the other eye is 2050, or because that happens to be their dominant eye. So you need to know how Herring's law can apply both for pseudoparesis of the contralateral antagonist as well as primary versus secondary deviations.